Deputy Presiding. You heard it. You may remain standing. We'll call uh, this meeting to order at this time. Is the uh, Reverend Andrew Winstead here? We've got a lot of people outside. He may be outside. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, the Reverend Danny Bale if he would lead us in our prayer at this time, please. And Danny, you can do it from there. Thank you. That's right. Our God and our Father, we come to you knowing that you are all God. I pray to God that tonight that you'll bless us as we have gathered here tonight. Father, there are things that are important. Our Father, Lord, the most important thing is you. Help us that everything will be done in decency and in order, and that we as a people will represent Hamlet County, our Father, Lord, and that the people around in our area will know that we love you. We're civil. We are obedient to your will. Bless our commissioners. Our Father, Lord, we pray that you protect them, protect each one that is here tonight. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Danny. I'm going to ask the commissioner, uh, Kim Gomez, to lead us in our pledge. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be Open for business. 
at this time we have an employee that we want to recognize, and I'm going to ask that uh, Patty Prophet, uh, Commissioner Cutshaw, and uh, Teresa West, if you're present, please come to the way. Hi, Patty. Hey, on behalf. I, I want everyone to know I've known Patty a long time, and like I've said before, the best compliment you can give is when you don't hear anything. When someone does their job and comes to work diligently and performs that, so thank you, Patty, for that. I've known you a long time, went to church weather, went to school weather, and thank you for who you are and your service and your talents. And I want to say something. I appreciate all Patty does. She's over our cost collection department. She does a great job. And uh, she has been diligent and given the county 20 years of service. So I thank her. At this time, we're going to receive public comments on items that are on the agenda only. I want to make some clarifications at this point. If you're here wanting to address uh, uh, the uh, property maintenance uh, issue, uh, we ask that you please wait until we have the public hearing for that issue, and then you'll be given an opportunity to address that item. Also, if you're here tonight in support of any of the candidates who are running for District 14, you need at this time to uh, uh, address your comments to the commission. Uh, uh, so the floor uh, uh, is open except we have a few people who requested to speak uh, five minutes. And so at this time I'm going to recognize Linda Miller. <coughs> who have served for, let's see, 16 years illegally. That would be Mr. Jack Fishman, Chairman of the Morristown Industrial Board, and, uh, well, Marshall Ramsey came here later than, he hasn't been on there illegally 16 years, he's probably about seven years. I find that very interesting that that board was operating with a legal membership at least these people. And back from 2003 to 2016 or so, you had a whole bunch of illegal members. You had Jody Wigington with MUS and numerous people that were serving illegally. Of course, I was accused of saying, of lying about that, when in fact, I was telling you the truth. And Marshall Ramsey, an illegal member of that board, stood right here turned toward me and said, I was a liar. I think that's important to note. You had also another county official sitting in the jury box who passed, who sent you an email telling you that I had made a false statement when I said there were unauthorized members of the board. I was not making false statements. 
the worry about the Joint Economic Board, and I will touch on this briefly, is Section, I think it's 9, Funding and Budgets, number 10. You are getting ready to set up a situation where that board, made up of primarily city officials, predominantly city officials, can come up here with a budget of $500,000 for marketing, and you, by law, would have to fund it during with the funding formula being currently in place. You are setting yourself up for a mandate. I, I can't emphasize too much, you shouldn't do that. Did everyone get a copy of the two sections of the code I sent out? If anyone needs it, I have one more here. Okay, this relates to the Jail Justice Center. Last Thursday, you were presented, unveiled the county jail plan or Jail Justice Center. $85 million. In the Tennessee Code, there is a provision that you can pass a resolution that says if this goes to a referendum. That's the 921-208, Will of People. And then 921-209 says all you have to do is pass an election resolution. It was much like the wheel tax in 2002. Let the people vote. They're the ones paying for this. Let them vote. The other item I will briefly touch on is the cost of the jail. I pulled two nearby counties, Monroe and Loudoun. Now this comes from a WBIR article, June 19th of 2017. Monroe County Jail Justice Center, $31 million, 344 inmates, judicial and clerical operations and sheriff's office. That was done by Michael Brady. We're only funding or we're only going to get about 242 more inmates than that, but we're going to pay over twice as much, 72 million. Something is wrong here. The other is Loudon. This comes from the Loudon News Herald, January, excuse me, January 2nd, 2019. $17.5 million, 264 beds. That was Michael Brady also. It's about finished. You need to go back and look at this. Thank you. Thank you. Is Larry Buchanan Jr. here? Yes, sir. Okay. You requested to speak uh, uh, on the jail issue. I know this is going to be five minutes. I was requested five minutes. It was on the uh, any codes enforcement. Yes, and that will come at another time. Okay. All right. Uh, I've heard so many numbers battered around about how much this jail is going to cost. Uh, I, my understanding is we started at about 30 to 40 million dollars. Now I'm hearing 85 million a day. I mean, where's it going to stop? 150, 200? I mean, I don't understand why we can't predict somewhat what the cost will be. Um, and on top of that, we have added. Uh, funding for education to help persuade other other commissioners that maybe was a no vote to try to get them to vote yes. Just vote on an issue straight up. That's all we want. You vote on the issue straight up. The one issue, don't don't cloud the waters up. Uh, my understanding, the current jail is equipped to handle 255 inmate, inmates with a staff of 52 people. Uh, this is a 4.9 inmates per employee ratio. Uh, the proposed jail, my understanding, somewhere in the 584 to 640 inmate category, uh, and is going to employ between 142 and 152 people. Uh, just doing the math on this, it, it comes out to 4.1 inmates uh, per employee. Uh, in order to be staffed at an equal efficiency, it should only be 122 employees. If you can't buy a design that would at least meet the same efficiency that we got, then you need to look elsewhere. 
Um, that means we've got about 20 to 30 employees more than what's actually needed. Uh, if you calculate an employee's total benefit package, maybe around $24 an hour, I'm not sure what it is for a county employee. Uh, you're looking at $1.2 million a year extra that the taxpayers are going to have to pay every year after that. <clears throat> That's no good. The taxpayers don't want that. I don't think anybody in here wants that. Uh, the location. You have a two-acre plot. Uh, from what roundabout? At the corner of Jackson Street and West 3rd North Street where the old horrible jail used to be. And uh, four stories high, from my understanding. Elevators and stairways take up the valuable square footage. So every floor is going to be took up with elevator space, stairwell space, just waste, just pure waste. Uh, the taxpayers like myself, we all understand we need a new jail. We lost accreditation back a few years ago, and, and the, the citizens understand we need a new jail. But we need a uh, we need a jail that takes into consideration in its design uh, efficiency. Uh, there's no corporation comes here to Morristown and opens a facility or puts in a new line to be less efficient. There's, there's nobody in their right mind does those kind of things. Uh, on the taxation, you're voting on a bond. Uh, the, the property owners in Hamlin County we do share a brunt, the brunt of the funding of the county. Uh, but if you look at society today, there's more and more renters in the population. <coughs> renters are not popular, uh, property owners per se. They indirectly pay property taxes through their rent. I understand that. But they do not have a share, or it's kind of hidden to them, you know, their funding of the uh, the property taxes. Uh, I think a wheel tax, if you're going to do this funding, it should go through the wheel tax or something similar. Even renters drive cars. And that is a progressive tax. The more people make, uh, the more cars they have. You know, up to a certain point within reason. But uh, they can afford to have more cars. They will have more cars. They will pay more taxes. And uh, that's, I, I just think it shows uh, uh, the current site and everything. I just think it's troubling the amount of short sightedness I'm seeing here on the county commission on this for the ones that support it. Because it's not going to be long, we're going to need more space, and there's no place to go. And it'll be another referendum again. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Buchanan. That's all the uh, special requests for additional time. At this time, anyone who wants to, adhere, uh, to address the commission on items that are on the agenda, you have three minutes. Please come to the podium, state your name and address. My name is Audrey Lowe. I live here in Lawrencetown. I guess I'm just going to cut to the chase. Boys, we need to have a referendum and let the people in this county decide about this jail expense. Um, I know there needs to be repairs on the jail we have. I have repairs that I have to make all the time on my home that's 40 years old. Um, jail's 40 years old, it needs got some cracks, it needs fixing. We need to learn to live within our means and stop spending, spending, spending. Now, my problem is I don't understand and I need someone to explain to me why we take prisoners from other counties, why they're not responsible for their own prisoners. Why do we have to take them in? Uh, we need to reduce the crime in this town, which I think our wonderful sheriff is doing a good job, but I think that if we just keep building bigger and nicer buildings to accommodate every county around here, uh, we're going to have to go build another one later because 650 beds is not enough. Uh, we don't need to be taking in prisoners from other towns. You know, let them look after their own. 
We just need to work on the crime in this town and reduce the 425 beds that we now have or whatever. I just don't understand. And I think the people in Hamlin County need to vote on this. Uh, because you're spending our money. Every one of you voted, every one of you ran saying, oh, I want to serve the people of Hamlin County. And all you're doing is taxing us to death. Right. And it's, it's too much. Enough is enough is enough. Amen. You know, now, Marty Briggs came up years ago. Oh, the temporary wheel tax. It's just temporary. Yeah. Just yeah. temporary. Yeah. Well, guess what? Yeah. Are you still paying a wheel tax? Yeah. yeah. You know, so there is no such thing as my husband, Tom, used to say. There is no such thing as a temporary tax. And don't forget it. Because they'll tax us now, and then they'll see they've got to have more money later for something else, community center, or the schools, or whatever. You know, more, more, more. Well, where's the Tennessee lottery money that's supposed to, what, 400 and some million dollars that they get? Do our schools skid? No. We still got to give more and more and more just for that. I don't understand. Something is just not right. And the leaders of this body is supposed to be serving us, not a special interest group, and not a, a, a bunch of good old boys that want to tax, tax, tax. We don't all have the money you guys have. Most of you are businessmen. You've made your money. Uh, you know, probably don't bother you, you but you know what? It bothers us. Goodbye. Thank you. Awesome. Anyone else who wants to address the box? My name is Teresa Archer, and I live in the 13th district. First of all, I love Hamlin County. I was born and raised here. We have the beauty of green fields, mountains, and lakes. But I've never been disappointed as I am in these county officials. I understand things around here need to be cleaned up. And yeah. with that address, not everybody in Hamlin County needs to be under the scrutiny of it. If you raise the taxes, you're going to have the industry to leave. When they leave, we're not going to have any jobs. I'm fortunate enough, I have a state job and can retire in several years. And this jail, it's nonsense. You've hired one of the most expensive and prestigious architectural firms when you've got them in our own back door. Why go to North Carolina? My daughter's father is an architect and has designed some of the county justice centers in southwest Virginia for a, I'm talking, probably 70% less than what you have estimated that have your courthouses, your sheriff's office, and your jail. Whatever happened to keeping your tax dollars at home? Would that not have helped if you had hired someone local? And Mr. Mayor, when you're proposing to raise our taxes on 30,000 trusted voters that you are saying you have our best interest at hand with the code enforcement and the money for the jail, why are you, rumor has it you're not going to run in 22 and you're going to move to Granger County? Are you wanting to do this to where you can sink us here and then you can just flee and abandon ship and go to another county? Yeah. If you want to be like Gary Chesney, I suggest you go to the city and you work with Gary Chesney and leave the hardworking, farm owning people alone. With all due respect to you, commissioners, I want you to remember every single one of you, we put you in office. Yep. Whether they are here in this room, they're still at work, or if they're standing outside, if you want to keep your jobs, you better listen to us. Amen. Amen. We can make a of you all I dislike. But, you know, it's just not us that are taxpayers. You all are taxpayers, too. Can you afford this? I'm a single woman and raised a daughter. Starting at $18,000 and 20 years later, I don't even make $30,000. You know, I've done well by educating her and putting her through college. With no help, no government funding. We, I can't afford this. Right. And you've got people that make a whole lot less money than me. They can't afford it either. I do thank you for your time.
Mm. I'm Esco Jonigan, the Sheriff of Hammond County, 2015 Mayor of Britain, Chairman Eldridge, Jail Administrator of Captain Laws, and I attended a seminar in Colorado called Plan Planning of a New Institution. Two important issues surfaced build with plenty of space for expansion and never build up unless there is no choice. It is more costly to taxpayers to fund a four-story jail versus ground level. <coughs> Elevators and stairways are costly. The yearly payroll exp expense will almost triple in order to maintain a four-story jail. A ground level jail would require less jailers that would save millions of dollars yearly. It is going to be difficult to hire 140 plus employees to man the four-story jail when we cannot hire the required 53 employees to man your jail now. We work shorthanded constantly by as much as eight to 10 employees. This is 43 to 45 at a time. We have only one application for a new hiring employee in present time. It is my opinion, based on my responsibilities and experience of operating your jail for 13 years, that to build a four-story jail on this 2.3 acre is not the best location. A few months ago, Mayor Britt, Chief Deputy Wayne Myers, Captain Laws, many of y'all, and I visited potential sites that range from four to 16 acres. Many of these sites have plenty of room with limited cause for site preparation because they were open fields. They also had room for additional growth without additional purchases. The following week, when the potential building sites were presented for your vote, the results were 12 to 2 to build the new <coughs> 0.3 acres next door to the old jail. Commissioner Tim Goins <coughs> and Jeff Akers voted no. Homes had to be purchased and families had to relocate from this 2.3 acres. These citizens had a long history of living and raising their families at these locations. The beautiful, national recognized Rose Center and many restored, maintained historical homes will be extremely compromised by a jail only a few three feet across the street. Your job is making decisions on behalf of the voters who elected you. This is your job. Present day parking is a nightmare at the Justice Center and when the construction starts with your new jail, heavy machinery, hundreds of construction employees and their vehicles, one can only hope that your plan of action can make everyday operation at the jail run smoothly. I am Esco Jonigan, your sheriff. I am opposed to your decision to build the jail on the 2.3 acres next door to the old jail. Thank you.
get to tell you that I'll give it my best shot, but I'm for the taxpayers. I'm not for anybody else. Nobody else. I don't know anybody else anything. But I would certainly appreciate it if it was with plenty high poor folks. I don't know how you was raised, most of us was raised poor in here. Thank you. stuff up here at this jail, that's fine. 
Won't you think about trying to keep people out of jail? Amen. Give them something to do in this town. I mean, the only thing you got is a restaurant. I mean, there's nothing here. You took cruising away. You took everything away from the kids. The only thing you got is that mom. What's that? I mean, they're bored out of their mind. No wonder they turn to drugs. They don't have anything. There's nothing here. I mean, I've lived beside Cherokee Lake for 50 years. This thing's some bad case thing. Amen. You couldn't eat a fish out of it if you wanted. I mean, what have you what do you offer? Take more of my money. Your time's up, so we appreciate your comment. Anybody here who wants to address the commission regarding the candidates that are seeking the position of commissioner for district uh, 14? If you do, you need to do so now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner. I'm Steve Lawrence. I live at 2585 Mountain View Drive, Morris. Uh, I am here to talk about a candidate, and I have to say, based on the discussion I've heard here in the last half hour, I believe a candidate who has the common sense to make the kind of decisions that the people here are asking for. So I'm here to ask you to consider and vote for Chris Cates to fill the vacant seat representing Hamlet County District 14. Mr. Cates brings experience and education which has prepared him to represent the constituents in his district and all the citizens of Hamlet County. He's earned a master's degree in strategic leadership, which will benefit both this, this body in both committee work, as well as in making strategic decisions, the kind of decisions that we're hearing about tonight. Chris is vice president at Walter State Community College, where I work with him. He's responsible for the management of scholarship funds exceeding $25 million. He's proven his trustworthiness Besides that enough, his trustworthiness and his effectiveness in that fiduciary role. He's been a committed leader in the community. He's a graduate of Hamlin County Chamber of Commerce Leadership Program. He serves with Habitat for Humanity, the Hamlin County Leadership Program, and on the Finance Committee of his church, First Baptist Church. He understands Hamlin County as a Morristown East graduate and as a Carson Newman graduate. Smiles, thank you. He's demonstrated his commitment to education as the key to economic development and job creation in the county. I stand here as a senior citizen saying Chris's youth is a strong asset for this body. And I think it's a, a model that the body should look at. As Hamlin County grows and continues to attract new workers and families, <coughs> the commission will benefit from demonstrating a more diverse membership. Chris Gates will bring his commitment, education, and experience to the citizens of Hamlin County, and I strongly urge the members of the commission to cast your individual vote, votes for Chris Gates. Thank you. My name is Todd Butler. I uh, live at 1170 Hickory View Drive. Um, I'm a citizen of District 14, and I too would like to ask for your uh, your approval of, of Chris Cates uh, as county commissioner. Um, I have lived uh, beside him for over a decade now. Uh, I can speak to his character as well as uh, served alongside him in some nonprofit roles, and, uh, and he has a a servant's heart toward not only the people but also the, the entities that he works with, both in higher education and in nonprofit organizations. Uh, I think he would be a real asset to our county, and uh, I, I, as well as he, would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in this group right here who uh, wants to address the commission on high-degree education? 
being done, Officer Ingram, I understand that you have some people out there. Let me check with them to make sure. Okay. Now is their opportunity. <laughs> to that. 
The exception would be that if we would happen to have two people who had a tie vote and another candidate who maybe have one vote, uh, more than that, less than a majority, then we would revote that issue, uh, you see. So, commissioners, is this uh, okay for you all to go by these rules? All right? Okay, the floor is now open for nominations. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to nominate Edna Green. Edna Green spoke to you a while ago, and uh, she comes to all the commission meetings, and she uh, really loves our county, and uh, I think she'll do a wonderful job for us. Okay, Edna Green has been nominated. Any others? Commissioner Ford. <laughs> 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 My brother's to <laughs> 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 Okay, stop that shot. You've been nominated. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'd like to nominate Martin Wise. Okay. Martin Wise. That was Tim Horner. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I would nominate Jonathan Maxey. Okay. Jonathan Maxey has been nominated. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'd nominate Ms. Eileen Orwine. Orwine. Eileen Orwine has been nominated. Mr. Chairman, I would nominate Chris Cates. Okay, Chris Cates has been nominated. Anybody else? All right, we're going to proceed with the first round of votes. As your name is called, please let the clerks know who you are voting for. Okay? Jeff Akers. Jonathan Maxson. Chris Cutshaw. Martin Wise. Randy DeBoer. Chris Gates. Thomas Doty. Eileen Horn White. Jim Goins. Mr. Weiss. I'm sorry. Mr. Weiss. <coughs> Martin Weiss. Martin Weiss. Edna Green. Alan Shipley. Uh, Chris Cates. Jim Stepp. Miss Hardwine. Taylor Ward. Coach Hall. Has been eliminated. 
Okay? All the commissioners understand who's been elected. Okay? As your name is called, please let the clerk know who you're voting for on round two.
Scotty Long, the trustee. Huh? Scotty Long was representing the 14th. He went to trustee. Is she going to do this body uh, for a public hearing on the rezoning of a piece of property located at 4710 Old Kentucky Road from R1 to A1. Do we have anyone here who wishes to speak in favor 
or against the rezoning of this piece of property. If you do so, you need to come to the podium at this time. Seeing none, then we will uh, close the public hearing for the rezoning of this, of this piece of property. We'll move to item number five. Uh, and the cha chair would entertain a motion to approve the rezoning of this piece of property from R1 to A1. Mark it on. Okay. Uh, move it. Can you hit a button on there? No, no, no. Okay, she's got to do it. Okay. Randy DeVore. We need a second. Second. Okay, Randy Smith, a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, let's vote the motion, please. Okay, the motion is approved. At this time, we are going to recess this body to an open public hearing regarding revisions to the property maintenance regulation. I've got a couple of people who have requested five minutes to speak regarding this. At this time, I will recognize Larry Buchanan, Jr. I'm Larry Buchanan, Jr. I live at 4315 Bent Creek Road in Russellville, uh, the 10th District. Uh, this legislation to me is very concerning. Uh, we all make decisions in life. Uh, some people decide to live in a highly regulated subdivision. Some people choose to live in less regulated subdivisions. Some people, like myself, choose to live out in the county. Unrestricted property is my property. I feel like I can do what I want. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the residents, and we have a few in here, I'm sure, that people that have lived in subdivisions are tired of the regulation, tired of people telling them what to do on their own property, so they go and buy unrestricted property out in the county so they can live their own life. Uh, there's many in here like that, I'm sure. Uh, the owners of, you know, basically the, the owners of unrestricted property in Hamlin County should not be subjected to basically the same reg regulations as subdivisions are under. Uh, we have worked every day. We have paid our bills, paid our taxes. And this is just an infringement on our free wills. Yep. Yes, sir. Not one member of this county commission has made one payment on my property. Yeah. Yes, sir. They don't earn the right to tell me what to do with my property. Nobody has paid for my property. Uh, we don't want more, you know, most of us love Hamlin County because it is a, a more conservative area. Uh, you can go to Knoxville, you can go to some of the other Tri-Cities areas. Uh, it's a lot more liberal in those areas. Uh, we don't want any of this liberal kind of stuff coming into our area. Where uh, unelected officials are coming and telling us what to, what to do. Uh, if the commission worried as much about the roads and the infrastructure... Yeah. And the yeah. 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 This county would be much better off. Yes, sir. Uh, come and ride the roads out deep in the county. Yeah. Come and ride the roads. Uh, on some of the actual uh, items that are within the uh, code, code, which actually mirrors the cities, uh, I'd like to know what qualifications does this code officer possess? Is it just, I'm appointed by the county mayor, therefore I can do whatever I want, or is this a, a, a PE or a civil engineer? I feel like it needs to be a PE or a civil engineer. They're the only ones qualified to tell me whether a structure is sound or not. There is nothing in this bill 
to build a qualification of a man that's going to come around and judge my property. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the next thing is, this seems to me to be a, a law enforcement position since they're able to levy fines and charge with misdemeanor. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. So I would therefore tell them that they're not welcome on my property. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. I mean, this is a law enforcement position. Codes, laws, they're the same thing. Uh, how do you determine what is too dilapidated? You come and look at my house, I've got a brand new deck. My neighbor does not. Are you going to come and tell my neighbor his deck is old, too? Are you going to come and tell my neighbor, a uh, 70-some-year-old man, the only thing he draws is a Social Security check? Yeah. It's fifty dollars a day till you tear that deck down and put a brand new deck. In. That man doesn't have the money. For it. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, also, if you are sighted, according to the bill, you've got ten days. Then you're then you start being levied fines of fifty dollars a day. Now, if you choose to appeal this fine, it costs you fifty dollars. <laughs> Whether you win or lose, it still costs you fifty dollars. Who thought of that? If, if I win, I should get my fifty dollars. Right? <laughs> On the twelve-inch grass in the yards. If I'm going to have to keep my grass under twelve inches, then the county dang well better start keeping the roads. <laughs> Canning, your time is up. Okay. Well, I just hope the commission considers all of this. Thank you. Aaron Brown. My name is Aaron Brown. I live at 1616 Three Springs Road in Russellville. Uh, forgive me, it's the first time I've ever addressed the commission or ever felt the need to. It's such a matter. Uh, First thing that came to mind when I found out about this was Thomas Jefferson once said, when the people fear the government, there's tyranny. When the government fears the people, there's liberty. Amen. That's why. Yeah. That's why I'm here. No American should ever live in, in fear that their government's going to drive past their property and bloody a fine for something that they don't yeah. like. That they, that they see. Yeah. I think that's an overreach of government power. Yeah. And I feel like in, in light of everything that's been going on with the jail and taxes, this is just another money grab. Yeah. 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 We don't deserve it. We don't want it. Now, I understand that there's property in the, in the county that needs to be cleared up, and there's there's other ways to go about it than to yeah. take away the rights of every taxpaying hey, property hey, hey, in hey, the hey. county. Uh, I'm a car guy. If you don't care, Mr. Goins, I'll use you as an example. I know you're a car guy, too. Uh, if I buy a car, i got to let it sit out. I can't afford to build a big garage to put it in. So in order for me to do and, and enjoy the hobby that I, that I enjoy, I gotta pay a fine. And I, I, gotta, I gotta put up a big garage and I, I gotta subject to subject myself to, uh, to fines and, and things that people like yourself would not have to. That's clearly not, 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 not fair. If uh, my mother-in-law loves, she, who's to say um, if, you have uh, your 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 yard is uh, your grass is too tall. Who's to say exactly what's a hay field and what's and what's a front yard? Amen. Yeah. You know where, where is the clarification? I was told I was told by uh, some people when I was talking about this, and they said that uh, you know this was just you know to to take care of a few problems in the county, and it, it was it wasn't really so that we could go around and start finding people. Well, that's not the way it's written. Yeah. That's not the way it was presented to us. And even more disturbing about it was I found out it through find out about it through hearsay on social media. Yeah. Yes, sir. When people went, when when a lot of you, you know, are elected officials in the county, want to be elected, they, uh, you know, they, they they let everybody know. They stop at nothing to let us know that they, that they want our vote. But we didn't hear about this. Yeah. Something so big that it, that affected so many. So, so dramatically was not very well advertised. 
Yeah. And it wasn't put out in the, in the, in the, in the, in the wasn't made known the way it should have been. And quite frankly, when something like that happens, you lose trust of the voters, yep. of the yeah. taxpayers. Yeah. It, it doesn't it doesn't come across as very fair, or uh, it just seems very underhanded. If uh, I served, I served uh, four years in the United States Air Force, and I never imagined that I'd have to fight literally for my rights in my own backyard. Amen. Amen. And I would appreciate the commission understanding that this overreach of power and this money grab is not going to go away. If you do pass it, we're going to fight it. Amen. This is not acceptable, and I would appreciate you understanding that that we're the voters and we're the taxpayers, and we do expect you to work for us. That's why we elect you. Yeah, and thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> the remaining speakers will have three minutes. Anyone else who wishes to address the commission regarding this issue? Yes, ma'am. My name is Martha Hopkins. I live at 2136 Courtney Road. You guys are pushing the socialist agenda. I don't want to live in a socialist town. A socialist Amen. county, a socialist state, or a socialist country. Yeah. I want to be free to do on my property what I want. Amen. I want to buy what I want. My husband restores cars. I want to buy an old car and fix it up and sell it. That's part of my retirement money. If you can buy a car for a little bit, and turn around and sell it for a property. That's money in my pocket. Amen. And you guys are telling me I can't have these cars in my yard to fix up? That's socialist. Yeah. That is socialist. Yeah. Yeah. Just like all these damn Democrats are pushing it in Washington, D.C. <laughs>
My husband went to pay the house off uh, that day. He was very excited because he was going to present me with the check. He owed $24 on that house. And why he didn't add that to the month before, I don't know. But he said he wanted it to be very special. And so our home has been paid off since 1994. Thank God and thank Tom. But I got to thinking, you know, that home, I just got my taxes yesterday for the mm -hmm. county. I'm going to owe $800 to the county for, for my county taxes, and I just paid $700 to the city in August. So I'm thinking, you know what, that house is never going to be mine. It's never going to be Robin and Tommy's. As long as we pay the taxes, it is. But you know what, if you keep taxing us and taxing us and taxing us, what's going to happen is I'm not going to be able to pay the taxes. And then you're going to take my property. So what am I paying for? I don't understand. To fix the cracks and crevices and call it home, I don't know. You know? That's all I've got to say as far as what it says. Anyone else? Yes, sir. It's a tree. The sun's holding the baby. Just keep up. No seal from 1780 Wall Street, Plattsburgh. Following these people, it's already talked about coming up on some really great karaoke singers, and I can't sing. But, um, I don't appreciate the way this was done. Yeah, right. I'm mad. Right. Good. We got you. This was supposed to go through without anybody knowing it. Amen. You guys know it too. Yeah. 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 Let me tell you something. These people that I lived with were signed up for 35 years. They got the problem on my property. I've got no problem with what's on theirs. And I don't need none of you all to tell me about my property. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you do, I'll hand my payment book to you and pay your rent. You guys know exactly what you was trying to do. That's why this didn't come through in the tribune. Right. Yeah. Back nine pages back in the small print. Yeah. Yeah. You know, your second is you try to squirt this stuff through like you did earlier in the year when you done the subdivision part. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My guys, we're looking at you. These people downstairs lined out the door. I just come from out there. Ain't nobody happy about this one, boys. These people that can't afford to fix up, can't afford to do this or that. I mean, we all do the best we can. If I wanted city rules, I'd live in Morristown. I grew up in this town. I moved to the country. That's about all I got to say on. <laughs> My name's Randall Wicker. I live at 1220 Simpson Road, Whitesburg, Tennessee. I'm going to make it short and sweet. I grew up right in the middle of Marstown. I couldn't wait till I turned old enough to get out of Marstown. I, I wanted to go to the county where I could do what I wanted to do, when I wanted to do it, and how I wanted to do it. Yeah. I pay my taxes. We pay for our house. And, Tim, you didn't mind my, you didn't mind your old car sitting inside my garage for a year. You didn't have a good problem with it. It had no tags on it. You know, and what we do with our property is our business, not just. I don't come to your house and tell you when to mow your yard, when you gutter need to be cleaned, or when to paint. Don't come to my house and tell me. Amen. This is the United States. We're free. That's why we live here. Yeah. You all are officials that we elect. You are servants of the county. What you're doing is a servant trying to become the king. Yeah. And we're not going to stand for it. Amen. And I'm going to remember everybody votes yes on this because if I have any way, I will be the first one on our election day to be standing there trying to get the other guy in and you out. Sir, my name is Daryl Marble. I live on Elwood Road in Morristown. I sit here and I listen to this. It reminds me of a day on September 23rd, 1983, 1.30 p.m. I raised my hand and became a member of the United States Air Force. I spent 18 months in New Mexico, then I went to the Philippines where I got a rude awakening and come to the real world. It's time to do my job in the real world. I was sent on a team to evacuate Ferdinand Marcos from the Republic of the Philippines to avoid the civil war that was getting ready to happen there. 
I'm not no brave man, but I can tell you when you're staring down the battle of the, the barrel of a Philippine M16, it was like it's the size of a cannon. Yeah. The only thing that I could think of during that time and the times after that when I had to do my job was the people right back out here in front of Witt School and the rest of Hamlin County that I was doing something for to preserve their freedom guaranteed yeah. by a constitution that I swore to give my life to defend. Amen. Amen. What I've seen up here is you're trying to take away freedom yeah. from these people. It's not yours to take away. It's theirs. You have no right whatsoever to take away the least bit of freedom from these people. And any amount of freedom that you try to take away from these people, I took an oath at one time that I'd give my life to defend, and that oath has not expired. Amen. And you will find your people are Because I will support that Constitution, and I hope I have to die to take care of them and their freedom, then so be it. Amen. Amen. My name is Bill Sexton, and I live in the District 11. I can't tell you which one of y'all is my commissioner, but I can tell you this, you're sure no guy caught my understanding, you seconded the motion on this mess. And I look at it like this. The Bible says God is love. And if you ain't got enough love and compassion about either one of y'all sitting here, about these people standing behind, uh, back here behind me, or if you're a fellow man, you're a shameful bunch of people. Amen. Amen. I live the same with Miss Gwen out here, right in the middle of all the junkyards, the scrapyards. I worked for Wayne Witts for many years, the biggest scrapyard in this town. If I had a problem with it, I'd up and move. It don't bother me whatsoever. Yeah, My neighbors across the road has got race cars. They run them up and down the driveways. That don't bother me a bit. These parts of cars scattered all across one job. That don't bother me a bit. It might be some to you. It might be an eyesore. If you look at your front door and see it, to me it don't bother me a bit. It's something that's keeping these kids off of drugs and everything else. Yeah, if they can put it with a car. Your family lives right out the road from me in the same community. And you're sitting here trying to push this garbage off on them. No. It's a shame. Woo. You might live in a fancy house. My house was built by something Guy Collins pushed for. To help me and my family out some more families out in my community. I don't see none of the rest of you doing it to help people in your community. Yeah. If it's such an eyesore, go out here and get with that grant like he got and help people up keep their property. Do something to help out instead of trying to take more and more from us. Yeah. Amen. 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 I have prayed to God that it would get better. I'm going to. I've already looked for my stomach, so I'll read it out like I do the other two problems. That's no way to be. That's no way to be. You're talking to the commission, honey, not to us. Well, it's no way to be. You're not supposed to treat your neighbor like that. We still you, love you. I do, you too. But I care about my property. I care about the way it looks. I do not like junkyards. I do not like landfills, and that is my right, because I am a taxpayer also. Right. I, my mama raised me to be clean, and that's what I am. And you know, I told God, God, if there's going to be niceness in heaven, I don't want to go. You know, what God, you, know, you know what God said to me? You know what God said to me? Y'all pray for me. Thank so I thank God for that. I don't hate people for having their jump yards and, the, and what's happened to me. I just don't understand it. And just because I like cleanliness, don't make me a bad person. And I've been harassed in my community, but I, it don't make no difference to me. I'm going to keep on working. I'm going to keep on cleaning. I'm going to keep on being clean, because that's who I am. <coughs> Anyone else? <laughs> yes, my name is Rick Day. I live at 2100 Valley Home Road. I believe
believe you're on commissioner, Mr. Steph, is that correct? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. My question, first of all, is how many of you gentlemen, and, and you ma'am, bothered to reach out to any of your constituents to try and make them aware of this? or to notify them like you would when you were seeking re-election or election. Amen. Amen. Secondly, my thing is, I live in the county for a reason. I want to live out there because that's unrestricted. I can do as I want with my property. Yeah. I try to keep my property up, but at the same time, I have no right to infringe on my neighbor's right as to what they do with theirs. Amen. There's over 50% of the labor for the companies and the, and the workforce in this county that come from out of our county. Yeah. How much more labor do you want to import? Do you want to send the rest of us out of the county and you can import 100%? That's all I got, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Tim Ramey. I live at 6572 Fisherman Drive in Talbot in the 13th District. I represent my Mr. Warren. I'm speaking in reference to the proposed county maintenance codes. I do not feel that they're necessary or fair to the long-term citizens of Hamlin County. The Constitution of the United States, Article 1, Section 10, says no state shall pass any ex facto law. Uh, history records that Thomas Jefferson interpreted this to mean criminal or civil laws, the application of which has been debated. Uh, the State of Tennessee Constitution, Article 1, Declaration of Rights, Section 11 states, the laws made for the punishment of acts committed previous to the existence of such laws and by them only declared criminal are contrary to the principles of free government, wherefore no ex post facto law shall be made. If the proposed countywide maintenance codes are put into effect, if some of our property is not up to code currently, we would be found in violation, and even one found to be in violation of said code and brought to civil penalty by fines or otherwise, our rights as citizens of this country would be violated per ex post facto law as we are living as we please in the pursuit of happiness <coughs> and without restrictions as if we have always lived. People who are looking to judge us on our living and maintenance values have no idea the hurdles we have come through. You cannot look at the current condition of a property that is without restriction and expect it to meet the same rules as a gated community. People moving to a restricted subdivision know the rules before they buy. We have no restrictions on our property and have lived according to our wishes and our own free will. To restrict us without proper justification is an injustice to the people of Hamlin County. On to the unreasonable point of enforcement in the current proposal. The amount of time for compliance is 10 days after citation. The process for a homeowner to get estimates from contractors and secure financing far exceeds the 10 days allotted. Also, the ordering of materials and getting permits and scheduling work takes time, often several months. Many of us work out of town or have limited time to do things. Many have disabilities, elderly, or economically repressed, and are unable to comply with proposed codes. If, if there are changes uh, in the way that we take care of things that you would like to see, then make them as a suggestion first with ample time for consideration and free will compliance. Um, I'd just like to say that, you know, I have neighbors that are on very fixed incomes, that have disabilities, and, you know, their property does need work. They're not able to perform that work. They don't have the finances to perform that work. I don't expect that any time in the future they're going to be able to do that. I mean, they have roofs. They have different things that they need. We have, my family has helped them from time to time. We hope to continue to do that. But, you know, really to, Im to impose a law on them that says that they have to fix things when they don't have the resources. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Thank you. My name is Dan Leonard, 619 Barton Drive, Morristown, Tennessee. ESCO, you need to go put an officer in charge of watching that Mustang. Somebody's going to get it. <laughs> uh, I'd just like to say, on behalf of a taxpayer here in the city and the county, that uh, we really don't want this code enforcement thing. You can't enforce the codes you have now. Amen. Amen. Me is a house of Mexicans. It's about 22 people in the place. Yes. Amen. In Good. one house. Yep. So enforce the laws that you have. Don't push any more on us. Yeah. 
Amen. That's all got to say to the But the other one out here, I'd say you vote against everyone up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 My name is William Riley. I live on Jewish Chapel Road. I've been harassed about 90% of the police in Marshtown for 40 years. I got 150 cars on my property right now. This evening, I was working on my Mustang, 65 Mustang. Mm -hmm. At 4 o'clock, somebody came up to me and said, did you know they was having a meeting about all these cars? I said, no, better get out there. And just like I say, I've been fine. Uh, Chris Couch right there fined me $1,800 for not showing up for court. I went to, I went to the planning commissioner one time. Nobody did anything about it. I come to the sheriff department to speak to the sheriff. He's busy. I've been out there 29 times in the last two years. Never get a chance to see him. And just like I say, I'm just tired of being tired. I mean, I feel like I'm kind of outnumbered in here, but I am a citizen. Amen. I pay taxes, big taxes. I pay about $18,000 a year for taxes on property. And I'm just getting tired of being harassed. So one of these days, something's going to happen. You watch the see. Amen. Amen. Fox. I live in Seven Oaks. My neighbor is sitting right over here. I just want to know how far this is going to go. Uh, a few years back, it was a wheel tax. You need a wheel tax to pay for this, pay for that. So you got to vote for it, or we don't, or we don't have to get property tax. We got a wheel tax and turned around, and the people sitting up here give us a property tax too. Amen. So everybody lied about it. Right. Now, when y'all take office, you say I'm a working for you. There ain't nobody working for me now with this kind of thing. Oh, I've got stuff in the driveway. Maybe Bobby don't like it, and he, and he tells these police officers to come to my house. It ain't none of his business what I've got in my driveway. Because what well, he's got in his driveway, nothing in my business. It, it, you know, it's just like a married man going out with somebody. Because he's going out with your wife, that ain't none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> and what you're doing, it's just like, a, well, Bobby's a school teacher. Let's say he's a principal. He got five people in the, in the whole high school over here to give any problem. He just takes the whole school leave. Everybody has to stay after school. We got five people not doing what we want done. None of you sitting here. Every one of you sitting here said, I'm a working for the people. Yeah. Well, you're not working for the people. That's right. Amen. And that's the way our government is from right from where we're at right now all the way to DC. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's getting corrupt. Yeah. And it's dictation. Everybody wants dictation. So if you want to keep your place where you're at now, you better vote this out. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, you know, my, my parents are 74 years old. They're on a fixed income. They worked their entire lives for what they own. And we're going to have somebody to just stroll in and say, you need to fix that. <clears throat> they're not able to. They can't afford it. And right now, they're trying to make a decision of should I buy medicine or should I buy my food? Yeah. And now you all want to come in and say your grass is too high? <coughs> you got a crack in your sidewalk? Just so y'all can make some money, what it boils down to. What about our roads? I was out here driving around on them today. I didn't drive on one road that was not full of potholes or patches. What are y'all doing with our tax money? Where's it going? I'm sure you all aren't suffering. this for an hour or so now and it's just ridiculous what you guys are trying to do. Yeah. It is. It really is. I left Hamlin County in 1965 and went into the Army <coughs> to fight for our free. <coughs> Everyone's free. And I get home and here's what I got. You guys. You guys. I don't know how many of you went into the military. If any of you did, I'm sure you did, man. <laughs> it's not fun. It's not fun at all. While I was in Vietnam, I spent two years there to protect our country and to have the freedom that we as citizens have earned in this country. And, you know, like I say, that just come home to this. You know, I have a, a purple heart and two bronze stars that I received in Vietnam. I can't walk, I have to walk with a stick. <coughs> because of the Agent Orange that I was in that has deteriorated my body to the point where I don't even want to get up in the morning. I wish you would think about what you're trying to do to us. We're not rich people by any means. You know, we all have bills. We have house payments. We have insurance payments. And you know, so we don't get out every week and mow our yards. And so we don't go all the way to the property line and mow down the weeds. But that's okay. There shouldn't be anybody worried about that but me. Amen. You know? You guys shouldn't worry about what my property <coughs> looks like. And I try to maintain my property. Uh, for my neighbors. And that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Johnny Walker, 3265, Three Springs Road. Y'all can see, you got a crash course and who really runs on that. Okay? And uh, we had an issue come up in Whitesburg. Uh, while I was on the commission about True Purpose Ministry, they wanted to build a rehab. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of them could remember that. I reached out to several constituents in my district, and they started coming to these meetings. Some of y'all seen them, some of them some of wasn't on the commission at that time. My advice to you, and I know that you're getting a lot of things, you're hearing a lot of people saying, you guys this, you guys that. 
this issue did not originate on the county commission. I know that. You do too. Right. We know where it comes from. It comes from the mayor, yeah. part of the planning commission, our county attorney, and a member of the planning. My advice to you, <coughs> my advice to those people at that time, this issue needs to die. It needs to die. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We don't, this, you're over. As I said at the, at the, uh, at the uh, health, health department two years ago, this is the can of worms that you're opening up that you do not understand, yeah. so much less know how to go. There's no way you can. Because you're going to make problem after problem after problem. You have the final say in, the, in this process. My advice to you would be to kill it. You don't. If you want to table it, whatever you want to do, if you want to vote on it today, I, I suggest that you kill it. Amen. You see who's in charge. Now, and one other thing. Stop giving money to city buildings to help their internet process. You have 17 or 18 more people that want to speak down in the hallway and they want to hear what's going on up here. They need to invest some of that kind of money that you're giving away to people who don't need it and invest it in this courthouse to people that do. Because there's a lot of people in the hallway that don't hear what's going on right now. And that, that's not a good thing, but so thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'm Mark Western, 4191 Chucky River Road. I know some of you gentlemen went to school with you, worked with you. This is a massive overreach yeah. of your powers for this county. You've opened a can of worms, just like Johnny was saying there, to where if somebody decides they want you off, their, off this piece of property or wants to buy it, they can. Okay, this guy's got a violation. This guy's got a violation to continue to push it. It's a massive overreach. Yes. You don't have, I, I live in the county, but like a lot of these other people, because I, be able, I want to be able to do whatever I want to with my property. If I keep it fairly clean, that's my problem. If my neighbors have got a problem with me, they'll come to me and tell me. I don't need the county, the commission, or the police, or the mayor, or anybody telling me, how I need to clean my property or how I need to operate my business. Amen. My Amen. This is a massive overreach. And like the lady said, it sounds, I mentioned it to two or three people today, and their first comment was, that's borderline communist. That's socialist. That's all that yeah. You don't tell somebody, eight or 10 or 12 people tell the whole county how they're going to operate their business on their own property that they're paying taxes for, that they paid for. This isn't right. You know it. And I, I don't know about the rest of the people here. I voted for several of you. And if you push this through, I'll not vote for you again. I'll put you these other people will. And as far as cutting this off, if there's people out there in the county that have come to this meeting that want to say something, you need to let them say it.
Then you're going to take the property again to sell it. Eventually, people are going to get fed up with it. And what they're going to do is they're not going to buy land here in Hamilton County. They're going to be stuck with a bunch of vacant land. So that takes care of that. But when you started on Wayne Litz years ago, I told you what would happen. Okay. Now, I said, when you run Wayne Litz out of this town, it'll be like Sneedville over here. Cars will be everywhere. This is cleaner than Sneedville is right now. And I've got to say that for sure, because Wayne Litz is in this town. And that's all I've got to say. And I hope that you do vote this down. Because if you don't, then you're making a world of mistake, and you won't be back in office again. Amen. Amen. My name is Brittany Green. I live at 140 Sequoia Drive. Seven years ago, my husband and I had saved up enough money to buy a house, raise our family in Hamblin County. We moved from Granger County to Hamblin County. Our biggest thing, we did not want to live in the city because we wanted to do what we wanted to do on our land. You guys are taking that away. Yep. You guys are complaining about the junk cars. There have been several times I've had to call a junk car to get a part for my car, for yeah. my daughter's car, hey, who's 17. Right. Right. We need that. I can't afford to go to AutoZone and spend $400 and get a junk car for a We can't afford that. I'm a, I'm a nurse. I work very hard. My husband's a paramedic here in Morristown. Works very hard. Makes nothing. But he's, he, he takes care of everybody that, that calls him. I take care of everybody that calls him. Don't take away our rights. My brother fought in the Navy. There are several people in here that fought to keep our land free. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't move to the city. We don't want the ordinance. If we wanted the ordinance, we would move to the city and not live in the county. There was an incident. My neighbor, 75 years old, who just recently passed away. He had a stroke about six months ago. Yes, his grass got hot. I didn't see anybody coming to ask him why his grass was hot. Instead, myself, my husband, and my 12-year-old went over and said, hey, what's going on? He had a stroke. He couldn't, he couldn't mow his yard anymore. We mowed his yard. There's reasons. Find out the reason why the grass is so hot. Yeah. There's exactly. reasons to check into it. Help each other. That's what we're supposed to do. Hamlin County is a great county. We're a growing county. We have new factories coming in. Nobody going to want to buy land here if, if there's so much control on the land. Nobody's going to want to move here. Because that's why I moved here, to be able to do what I wanted on my land. Thank you. Don't get 17 downstairs, do you? Do they want to speak? Yes. Do you have 17 people down there that want to speak? Yes. We're going to bring them up as we can. Okay, line them up in the stairwell. Yeah. We're, we're this is good. Okay. Never, never, seen All right. never, never, never seen this before. I guess you won't mess with their niceness, baby. And some of them are nice. I do know. I would like to remind you, commissioners, that your job is to work for us. Not for the agenda of the mayor or anybody else who represent us. If you vote for this, you're voting against our wants and needs. I will help everyone to vote you out of office. You need to keep reminding yourself you represent the citizens of Hamlin County. I don't care what the mayor wants. You represent us. Yeah. Amen. Tim Goins, you made the point last meeting with Ram, how bad we needed it because of the homeless and the poor in Hamlin County. Right. Yet you voted yes to put this up, knowing that we already have enough poor people in Hamlin County with the problem. Yep. We're not helping the situation, we're making it worse. In my county, our road's been mowed twice this year by the county mowers. Y'all can't do your job. Why do you expect that I have to do mine? I go over to the Justice Center yesterday, there's eight junk cars sitting in their front yard. I seriously doubt that they're registered to ESCO, and I doubt they're insured. As long as the county's crapping their own property up, you have no business stepping foot on my property telling me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your own. Hamlin County's maintenance department's horrible. Until yeah. you fix it, don't worry about me. You can't handle what's on your own plate right now. 
I hope you remember how to vote, because if you don't, I will help have you elected out.
Yes, you work for the county, but you also work for us to get what we need. Yes. Okay? And, and that's how it works. <coughs> for the people, by the people. Thank you.
My neighbors ain't complained against me. I know all my neighbors. They're fine with my trucks. They like hearing the history about them. We talk about them. That's the type of person I am. And that's the way my neighbors are. He rode by and seen my vehicles in my backyard, my implements in my backyard. And if he gets commission of these citations, why wouldn't he ride around and tell him that somebody called in? You know, if I was making a commission, I'd probably do that. But it just doesn't make any sense to me why I wasn't aware of any phases of this to happen and to get a letter like this in the mail just made me extremely upset. And the only way I, I, I'm gonna do what I can to correct my yard because my vehicles do all run and I move them all and I keep them all mowed, but I've moved my tractor out of my backyard. I'm gonna try to figure out a way to make it to where I'm in compliance in my 60, 80 hour work week to make it to where I don't have to spend this extra money, but I hope it doesn't pass. <coughs> and I don't know if it already has, because I don't get told anything. Yeah. But that's all. Thank you. I live at 2793 Clearview Road.